Hello, BookTube. It's been uh, about an hour since I voted. Um, I decided to vote on election day rather than trying to vote early because uh, my local polling place here in town is about a 11 minute walk. So I'm thinking I could just easily walk there and get some exercise and then walk back. Uh, so I, so I'm filming this at about 12.40 and I voted about 11.40. So I walked up there about 11.30 and got there, waited in line for barely a minute. Uh, there was not many people at the polling place, um, voters. So I got in, um, signed in, uh, went and voted and then walked back. So it was a pretty pleasant, uneventful event um, or experience. Um, got my little sticker. And so, yeah, so it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I was afraid it would be a longer wait, but it was barely any time at all. Um, so anyway, so for the first tag, I'm going to be doing this tag Tuesday. I'm going to be doing the presidential book tag, which I think was created by Steve Donahue, although there are a few presidents who are noticeably missing from this tag that if Steve had made it, I would have thought he would have included them, particularly William Howard Taft, because as much as Steve Donahue loves how William Howard Taft, you would think he would be in this tag. But anyway, there are 10 presidents to get through, so... Let's get through them. Uh, George Washington. What's the first book you remember reading all by yourself with no help from anybody? I cannot remember um, that. As far as I know of, I've never needed help from anybody to read. Um, as far back as I can remember, I've always been able to read unaided. Um, I've been told that when I was very young, um, barely a toddler, uh, my mom and, I, and at the time my dad um, would have had like a high school babysitter who uh, she wanted to be a teacher. So when she babysat me, she taught me how to read. So to be honest, I always remember being able to read without needing assistance. So there is no one book. Although, if one is looking for children book recommendations, uh, The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by uh, John Swirsky. I'll look it and link it down below. Or in the book mentions. I'll remember to have that down there. Uh, number two. Well, John Adams. What book comes to mind that's short but disproportionately powerful? Stony the Road by Henry Louis Gates Jr. It's a very short book, uh, barely over 200 pages, but it is oh, oh so powerful. Um, it looks at um, sort of the uh, retrenchment of racism in the United States after the Civil War and between the Civil War and um, the early um, civil rights movement. It is so incredibly powerful. And then, so Thomas Jefferson. Tell us about a book you like that's written by a very bad person. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, there are two. Uh, one's a book and then another one are uh, two series. So the book is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Um, so Ender's Game, it's about a uh, near future um, story where humanity has been at war for a century or so against an alien race that humanity cannot understand, cannot communicate with. And so in order to fight this war, um, genetically engineered children 
um, selected for intelligence and strategy are basically raised in this battle school. And the uh, main character, Ender Riggins, is selected to lead the uh, human forces against the aliens, eventually leading to humanity's victory in a very genocidal or xenocidal way. Um, and it is by Orson Scott Card, who has made a career over the last few decades um, of trying to ensure that um, queer Americans are perpetually second-class citizens. Um, another um, candidate for this uh, prompt is uh, David Eddings. Um, he wrote uh, the Tamuli, oh, well, the Alenium and the Tamuli trilogies, which I really enjoyed when I was younger. They are um, a series of fantasy, epic fantasy trilogies in which um, the character Sparhawk must defend his queen against a conspiracy to steal her throne and eventually goes up against a dark god. And then in the sequel, he essentially does the same thing. Um, David Eddings in the late 60s or very early 70s was convicted for abusing his adopted children and spent uh, about at least a year, if not more than a year in prison for that crime. In fact, at the time he was an academic and obviously lost that job and went on to become a grocery store clerk before uh, writing his first fantasy novels. So Orson Scott Card, David Eddings, both pretty terrible people. Um, Theodore Roosevelt, name a book that has more energy than you do. I'm going to echo Steve, Steve's um, answer to this prompt and answer with Brandon Sanderson, who can churn out 1,500 word behemoth novels on a yearly basis and I have absolutely no idea how the hell he does that. Um, while I may not necessarily like those books, I think they are incredibly bloated and uh, as Steve said probably everything he wanted to say he could probably say in three 600 page books but whatever. I mean it is, it's a thing about fantasy um, that there is a preference for longer books in longer series. I mean, there are some countervailing arguments against it, uh, particularly, I think, on the critical side. Um, but, I mean, the long books in long series is, yeah, the favorite form. I mean, personally, you could just Lord of the Rings length. Everything you, you know, it could be Lord of the Rings length. Anyway, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, is there a book that fundamentally changed your conception of reading? No, except for maybe the um, critical anthologies, um, like the Norton Critical Anthology, which I read for um, literary theory classes. I think that might have changed the way I've read, but or my reading, but otherwise, no. I don't think any book really changes how I've read. Uh, John Kennedy. What's the most glamorous it book you've ever read? Hmm, I'm not entirely sure about this one. Because I don't, I mean, because it, I mean, how do you define glamorous, and how do you find it? I mean, it's like, what's the definition of it is? <laughs> um, maybe... Um, Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Mar Marlon James. Um, might be one. Uh, I don't know. I might have to pass on this one. I do not 
cannot really think of a really really good answer right now. So anyway, moving on to Gerald Ford. Have you ever read a placeholder book? Something that only served to get you from one book to another. I read fantasy. Fantasy typically comes in series, and often those series will have middle, like several books in the middle, for which they probably could have been cut. Um, the most, the example that's most coming to mind now is, are, um, the Black Con and the Blue Eye, the, yeah, the Blue Eye by Awesome Zahina Khan, which is basically just pushing the plot along, but ultimately it is basically repeating beats from um, the blood print that it's sort of like, yeah, probably could have, I mean, one big fantasy book rather than four. But anyway, I still love the series, but yeah, they're placeholder books. Um, Bill Clinton. A reading experience you loved deep despite how utterly sinful it was. Um, the Sluts by Dennis Cooper. Definitely The Sluts by Dennis Cooper. Although, I do have in mind to pick up eventually a Boy Culture by Matthew Rittman, which Steve Donahue referenced in his video. I do really, really want that book. I've been wanting that book for a while. And I'd forgotten about it, but now I kind of want it again. So, George W. Bush. What's the most harmful book you've ever read? Um, again, I'm not entirely sure about the answer to this one. Um... See, no. I'm not really. Nothing's really jumping out at me as being particularly harmful. Um, so I think I may have to pass on this one. Because, uh, I mean, maybe um, a really bad literary, literary theory book. Um, but I don't really, yeah. So I'm not, I don't think there is one that really would fit this prompt of being like a very harmful book. I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, it could maybe be one of the um, how to write books I have, which can, in trying to help you learn to write, basically turn you into a gibbering mess of, uncertainty and not being able to write at all could be that so but i don't really know if there is one here that really fits so i guess i'll have to pass and number and finally a uh, barack obama what's the last great book you read flaws and all I'm going to say probably The Secret History of Wonder Woman by Joe Lepore. I think that one definitely was great and had quite a bit, some flaws, but was really great book, a really great history of Wonder Woman. And were more a biography of uh, Marston and his... Uh, wives well wife and mistress but their wives um so that was the presidential book tag um if you would like to do this tag uh, please consider yourself tagged um obviously if you have not yet voted and you still have time to vote uh, please do so and always please stay safe uh, thank you booktube and i will be back in a few minutes with another tag